Central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs, have people really concerned that government is going to totally control their money like never before. Today, we're gonna to talk facts, not fear, about what CBDCs will mean to you, and we're actually gonna tell you how you can protect yourself. First of all, what are CBDCs? Very simply, they're programmable money issued by central banks. And I want to focus on the actual solutions today because I think there's a lot of fear out there. There's a lot of defeatism, people thinking they can't fight back against this. Here's the truth. If you live in a high tax, increasingly anti-freedom, big, unaccountable Western country, no doubt your government and their central banks, they want to take away your privacy. They want to control what you do. They want to hold your spending decisions against you. As someone who spent a lot of time outside of the West in more than 100 countries in the last dozen years, what I've seen is that not every country has the means to or even wants to do that, nor will their population support it. And so the fact that Western countries are rolling out their own CBDCs, which they won't even say don't have some of the worst parts that people talk about, should tell you that your country is no more free than the Soviet Union, that you thought, hey, my country is so much better than this. At least I have freedom. It's really not true anymore. We have 87 countries right now that are working on CBDCs. And so the first thing that comes to my mind is you've got 196 sovereign countries. That means not all. It means not even half. And so when people say, nomad capitalist, go where you're treated best, no, 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 no. There's nowhere to run. First of all, I'm not running. I'm running to something where I believe I have more control over my life, more freedom, more happiness, more of all the stuff that I want. But the reality is you've got fewer than half the countries in the world by some standards working on or rolling out their own CBDCs. The challenge of a lot of people who are watching this, if you're listening in English, you're probably living in a country like the US or Canada or one like it where the government has increasingly been heavy handed. And you turn on the news and you hear only about countries like yours. And you say, hey, at least the US is in Canada. At least it's not Australia. We're not talking about those kind of countries. The ones that are not working on the CBDCs in many cases are the ones that you probably have never considered. And so if you believe the world is going in a direction where certain countries, perhaps particularly Western countries, maybe larger countries, are going to have increasing control over your finances, you might want to look for a non-Western. You might want to look for a smaller country. You might want to look for a country that perhaps was communist in your lifetime and they're like, no, we're not going back to that. The people will come for us with pitchforks if we do that. So you still have countries that are not getting in the bandwagon the same way as not every country got on the bag with uh, bandwagon with global tax, not every you know, country got on the bandwagon with, with you know, information sharing. There are always gonna be some countries that say, no, we're not doing that. And those are the ones that you should be focused on if this concerns you. Now, one of the things that I've talked about recently is that I believe a country like the United States, which at the turn of the century had 73% of its dollar as the global currency reserves, it's down to 58. And I believe with a large part of the world being sanctioned by the US, about 29%, you're gonna see more and more countries, both by necessity, out of fear, out of revenge, shifting their reserves. What's gonna to happen to the US when that happens, when their dollar becomes increasingly irrelevant? I'm not saying it's gonna become irrelevant, but it'll be just a little bit every year. They're gonna get pushed into a corner and they're gonna to wanna to roll out stuff to push back and to take the power back. They are not gonna go down without swinging. And so what countries like the US are saying is, hey, we want CBDCs to help the unbanked. And so that's not really an issue in a country like the US where there's about 4% of the people are unbanked. Obviously there are emerging countries where a substantial number of people are unbanked. But in the US, the idea that 4% of folks, many of whom just don't wanna be part of the banking system, that those people need a CBDC is rather laughable. Of course, the government is also talking about how they're gonna catch tax evaders, which is always the excuse. They rolled out you know, global information sharing for Americans with what's called FATCA, to where if you're an American and you wanna open a bank account in some other country, that other bank or financial institution has to tell the US government that you have an account there. Not a big deal, and I think it's still worth it because we don't talk about hiding money, we talk about diversifying our money here, doing it legally. I'm the goody two-shoes of the offshore world. We do things the legal way. And so if you can work with one of our tax pros to handle a pretty simple form, talk, telling the US where your bank accounts are, 
you can enjoy diversification, higher interest rates, you know, benefits from holding money in different currencies, investments in other places. But guess what? There are some banks that don't want you because you're an American, because they said this is too much work. And so the U.S. has been trying to stop so-called tax evaders. And guess who gets caught in the crosshairs? A lot of everyday innocent people who just want to diversify their money. Heck, even people who live overseas sometimes can't even get bank accounts in the country they live in just because they're American. So the whole idea of bringing in the unbanked and stopping the bad guys just doesn't really square with me. Now, let's talk about a few things that you should be aware of with CBDCs. What people often talk about is a nefarious narrative, and that is that money can be programmed, for example, the CBDCs can be programmed to where you, some, some spending will be controlled. They've said, oh, we can control inflation, which has been a recent topic, right? You think that these, uh, the powers that be are happy that inflation is happening and that people are pushing back on them? No, 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 they wanna maintain power. So we can stop inflation by not allowing certain types of spending. We'll just program the CBDC to tell you if to spend your money on certain things. Other people have talked about how, hey, money could have an expiration date. We don't want you hoarding money. Now, what part of the world does that match the, the zeitgeist in? A lot of the places where I go, I don't hear a lot about the evil millionaires and billionaires. I do hear a lot about it in the Western countries when I turn on the Western news, how Bernie Sanders now says no one should be a billionaire. Now, even if you're not a billionaire, if you can have money, if you have more, more than $500, you have more money than almost uh, than what, like two thirds of people in the United States or the UK, people don't even have money to pay for an emergency. And so the fact that you have money in these countries, of course they'll come, they'll be happy to come for you. Do you think the people in Dubai are worried about people coming with money? They want people to come, please have money. We want you to have money. So it's a different kind of culture right now. One is on the upswing. They don't have to be pushing back on rich people. Rich in quotes, right? Maybe you have more than $500. Countries that are, on, that are on the downswing, like the United States, where I'm from, which was one of the most free economies in the world when I was born, it's now like slowly declining every year. Again, when people who are getting cornered, you know, they tend to lash out. And so the other nefarious narrative, these are just theories people put out there, is maybe the biggest U.S. banks want to practice crony capitalism and watch small banks crumble because the small banks don't have the infrastructure to keep up. So those are a couple of the things people are talking about. Do I think some people go too far in some of these narratives? Yes, I do. But you have to ask yourself, does your government where you live want more control over your money? Would they love to keep themselves in power? Would they love to stop things like inflation all by telling you if you have money, hey, you can't do this with it? I think that they would. One of the things that I think they can do, uh, number two, they've talked about controlling where you shop. What I've thought for many years, and I think is increasingly you know, possible, is if you live in a country where everything's given to you, now if you live in the United States, you pay a boatload of taxes, you don't even get free healthcare. At least in Europe, you, know, you get some services. But what happens when you need some medical treatment and they go through and say, wow, you, uh, you had a lot of Cheetos over the years, or you spent a lot at uh, you know, O'Brien's Liquor, right? I mean, in Dublin, I pass O'Brien's Wine. I say, what if I went in to O'Brien's wine too often, or I had too many parties, or you know, whatever it is. Hey, that's a lot of O'Brien's wine over the years. You know what? We don't want to pay for it. And I'd like to think like, you know, it's a little conspiratorial, but I've always thought the government wanting to control all the services you get, wanting this kind of cradle to grave entitlement was all about being able to select people later and say, ah, 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 you don't get it. Because they're not good at managing their money. I mean, show me a Western country that's not broke. Eventually, especially as people get older in these countries, I mean, the, the, the trend is moving older, right? Which is why countries in Africa, Southeast Asia, Latin America in some cases, where they're much younger, that's where all of the future the economy is. Western countries with aging populations, they're going to have too many older people to pay for. What are they going to do? Just keep borrowing indefinitely? Well, what if you, you combine that with the fact that the U.S. dollar perhaps is becoming a little bit less and less relevant every year? A lot of the countries around the world don't want to buy things like U.S. debt. I mean, it's gonna be harder and harder to pay for things. And so if you have a list of where people shopped, actually, I think it could be a little bit of crony capitalism in that I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm not gonna to go to O'Brien's Wines. 
I'm going to buy all my alcohol at Tesco where I can kind of, you know, use plausible deniability that I just bought that. Uh, hey, I was buying a lot of tomatoes and uh, onions. You know, I love making tacos at home, a Taco Tuesday. It wasn't a bunch of alcohol. And I almost think that's probably unfair to people who sell stuff that uh, you wouldn't necessarily want people to know that you bought or you bought as much of it as uh, you did. Now, one of the things that you could, for example, do is you could say, hey, listen, uh, you, you know, you're not going to buy your wine somewhere else, but what if you were able to go and get your health care somewhere else? Uh, Prince Court Medical Center in Malaysia, one that I've raved about for years. Uh, pennies on the dollar for care. Nomad Capitalist Live, our live event, taking place this year in Kuala Lumpur, mere miles from Prince Court Hospital. $301 is what I paid for a wall-to-wall -wall health checkup. Had ample time to talk to the doctor. I never felt rushed. Amazing quality care by doctors trained in the West. And so you could come to Nomad Capitalist Live, spend four days learning about how to protect yourself from all the changes happening in the world, learn about second passports, learn about bank accounts, learn about um, all the different ways to diversify, all the different plan A and plan B strategies, four days of wall-to-wall -wall information. You could practically pay for your ticket with the savings of going and getting your health care at uh, Prince Court or Glen Eagles or any of the other top tier amazing you know, medical facilities. So there's a reason, right? I and mean, I think being diversified you know, using services from around the world is one way to kind of fight back against one government having all of your information. Obviously, there may be times when you have to disclose medical treatment you've received uh, for your insurance company, or whatever else, and I would never tell you to not do that. But there's just one way to diversify. And if you're trying to learn, hey, how do I protect myself from what's happening? My country wants to control everything I'm doing. Four days, Nomad Capitalist Live. Go to nomadcapitalist.com slash live, and we will be educating people on all the stuff that Nomad Capitalist entails uh, this September. Now, what you would learn if you came to a country like Malaysia is not every country is trying to be a nanny state. Not every population is jealous that other people have some money. I honestly think in Malaysia, you have some of the nicest people where it's like, hey, you do you, I do me. It's not really my business what you do. And so some cultures aren't gonna care how you spend your money. You drink too much, that's great. There are going to be countries where, yeah, we don't give you free health care because we don't charge you very much, if anything, in taxes. It's like, truly, you're on your own. And so if you were to move overseas, live in a country where they don't want to be the nanny state, you don't pay much of anything in taxes, and you take care of yourself, a lot of the need for the stuff like the CBDCs goes away. A country that's not extorting you for money probably doesn't need as much information on you as one that is, and then like gives it back to you like, Hey, don't you want your free medical care you gotta wait six months for? It's not really gonna be an issue in other cultures. And again, other cultures, I believe, that this is a key difference, I've told you for years. Culture matters. And if you only live in the US, and maybe you go on vacation to Italy or something, or to the UK, or, and you look at Canada, or you look at Australia, those are not gonna be different. But there are countries out there where they still wanna use cash, you go to parts of the Middle East, you go to parts of Asia, you, heck, you go to Hong Kong, it is cash city. Oh, we're going to ban cash. They're not banning cash in those places, but yes, they are doing it in some places in the West. You have to understand that is isolated to certain parts of the world. That will impact on the CBDC argument. Now, here's another issue. The Bank of England has said, hey, we're going to use this to prevent bank runs. Now, they haven't maybe, the, they're being a little cagey all these different uh, entities and what they're saying, but we basically understand that they say, hey, this can be used to prevent bank runs. Now, what does that mean? They could freeze your money basically in time of a crisis. You've heard about bail-ins in places like Cyprus. You've heard about countries like Poland reaching in and grabbing your retirement account. We're just gonna borrow it. Countries like Australia have put in place things for bail-in laws. They have set themselves up that, hey, if things go badly, your money's on the line. Now they're saying, hey, listen, three of the biggest bank failures in US history this year, we're just not gonna let you have it. Yeah, we don't care. Oh, listen. And by the way, what did the FDIC say? All right, we'll come in. All right, fine. We'll cover you over the FDIC limit. But they basically made it clear that they will decide on a case-by-case -case basis whether you get your money. Number one, a great reason to diversify and have your money in safer banks because U.S. banks fail more than banks in any other country combined. But I don't want to have my money in a country where they're going to freeze my money in times of crisis. Again, cultural issue more than financial issue. So you're seeing the big governments of the Western world that I believe are not being honest. I think you could probably say that about a lot of things. And so that's exactly where Nomad Capitalist comes in and go where you're treated best. And I think one of the biggest things that I'm trying to connect with people on is 
there truly are places that are different from where you're from. Now, you have some countries that are becoming more pro-crypto. The bigger ones see it as a threat. Uh, heck, I was recently talking to some folks in the crypto space. They're like, hey, the EU and Ireland, I mean, even they're better than the US. And I'm sure that they're not you know, the, the easiest to deal with uh, in the EU, but better than the US. So there are places that are better. What I also think is you have a difference between small countries that are out there trying to escape having the US dollar uh, take over. They don't want to be entirely reliant on the dollar. They want to have control over their own stuff. And they are using some of this kind of stuff to have a bit more control versus the larger countries where they're saying, hey, listen, if you don't you know, follow the right social conditions or the right environmental conditions, we're going to control your money. I do think there's a difference in what you, know, you see like some of the Caribbean countries doing versus what they're doing in the US and the Western countries. And so when people say, hey, CBDCs are gonna be implemented everywhere you live in the world. And so, hey, you think you'll be safe in Malaysia? Here's where I push back. There are people watching who are living in a country where you don't know what to do. You've almost resigned yourself to the world's just coming to an end. And it feels good, I suppose, to tell me that I'm screwed because you feel like you're screwed. So therefore I must be screwed too. And then you can feel a bit better about not doing anything about it. I truly believe that if you diversify with, um, in this case, different financial options, uh, having money, whatever that means to you in different places around the world, you're gonna be in a better position than just sitting and saying, well, the US, nothing bad can happen here or it'll happen everywhere. We already identified more than half the countries in the world aren't doing this. I actually happen to think, and I'm sure I'll get pushed back on this, that you see some teeny tiny little countries that have done their own CBDCs. It's a little, gonna be a little bit different than what the Bank of England is saying, like, hey, you won't be able to get your own cash and we're gonna do that. And they've actually been caught with their hands in the cookie jar saying, don't worry. And then, all right, fine, you should worry. It's a little bit different. And so please don't look at this as, hey, there's nothing to do about it. There's nowhere to go. It will happen everywhere. It's just an excuse to be lazy. And so again, if you're an American and you think that every country is like the US, you're just wrong. By the way, they can already freeze your money in these countries if they don't like you. Where is it that that happens? Uh, I don't see many bank accounts in Serbia being frozen. I don't see many uh, people's uh, gold coins being looted from their private safe deposit boxes in Malaysia. I do see that happening in the United States. And yes, there are some other countries where they are f routinely freezing people's bank accounts, but you've seen no more coverage than from the United States where a woman who deposited $30,000 that she made this month selling burritos where people pay in cash had her life savings, you know, and she, she just got, you know, taken down by the government. I don't see that in the rest of the world. And you can think that, oh, that's happening everywhere. It's not. It's just not. And so they, they, already, they already can freeze your money. Uh, this may perhaps just make it worse. Now, people say, okay, I'll just go and I'll just get a bunch of crypto, I'll get a bunch of Bitcoin. Here's the problem with that. Again, it comes down to culture. If the government says, hey, listen, you can only use the CBDC, you can't use Bitcoin, do you think Walmart or Tesco or whatever other companies are going to say, uh, no, we're going to fight back because we believe in like Bit... Nah, -uh. they're going to do whatever they have to do to go along to get along. And so you're going to want to be in a place where you've got better options culturally, where the government doesn't want to get involved because they feel a little bit afraid of the people or they've already been there, they've already had less freedom, they've kind of, they're on the growth phase rather than the phase where weak people are leading the country into oblivion. You know, I think that really this is an opportunity to look at how do I diversify myself? First of all, how do I diversify my mindset for the reasons that I talked about? Do I want to fight back or do I want to be a defeatist? You want countries that are different. And so again, we ain't talking about Canada here. We're talking about countries you might not think about so much. They have worked on CBDC stuff down in some of the Eastern Caribbean countries. If you're a citizen of St. Kitts and Nevis, first of all, 99% of the time, you aren't living in St. Kitts and Nevis. If you are the 1% that does, they don't have any taxes in St. Kitts and Nevis. So again, the play here is not as strong. I really believe that the level of control there is different. And so that might be the kind of a country where you say, okay, I'm gonna get a citizenship there. You might look at a country like Turkey. They have a citizenship by investment program they have been pushing back on some of the stuff that's happening in the Western world. You might look at a country like, I mean, there's many, Vanuatu, there's many different potential countries. But what I would do is consider that if I'm not gonna live in a country, it's probably not gonna have a lot of sway over me unless that country is the United States, which taxes me no matter where I live. 
Australia is now kind of getting into that tax me no matter where I live game. By the way, still ways to legally reduce your tax if you're American. But number one, if I have cryptocurrency or Bitcoin, maybe I'm putting that on a hard wallet and putting that in a vault somewhere. If I've got to report that, fine, but at least it's somewhere else. I'm going to get a second passport. If I need to duck out of my country because they become a caged tiger and I say, you know what, I don't want to be your citizen anymore, I've got another option. I don't have to wait months. Maybe there comes a time when they say, hey, listen, uh, we don't want your money for second citizenship. And most importantly, as Robert Kiyosaki told us at Nomad Capitalist Live in 2021, you want to have a 48-hour plan of where to go when the fur starts flying. And so you can kind of put those things together, have property in another, another country. Maybe that gets you a residence permit or a citizenship. Once you can use that as your flag of convenience, perhaps it allows you to escape your country. I really believe those flags are going to be your key to protecting yourself. Listen, you're going to see more countries say, hey, you should have less privacy. That's been a trend in everything for years. But you still have plenty of countries that have not gone down that path. Nomad Capitalist Live, we're going to be talking about this. We're going to be offering real solutions beyond what we talk about here. Obviously, we also help our own uh, private clients. I think that, you know, having been all over the world, this is a different view that the defeatists are not talking about. There is a way to protect yourself. Now, some of the stuff I think just goes off the rails. I take a more moderate approach, but you're going to want to protect yourself from all the anti-privacy, all the anti-wealth stuff happening. To me, it comes down to go where you're treated best, running to a place that serves you and wants you and running away from a place that doesn't.